Hey there one, today's video is going to be a very highly requested video for me to make. In my last collective haul video, I did mention that I got a lot of oddities and stuff for my birthday and just kind of picked up a few along the way. So this is going to be an oddities haul as you've probably guessed from the title. Also I'm clearly filming somewhere that is not where I normally film and that is because this is the first item that is part of this haul. If you follow me on Instagram you'd probably have seen this already. I picked this up at a charity shop or a thrift store, op shop, whatever you want to call it, um, for an absolute friggin' bargain price. People who are close to me know that I've been after one of these for many, many years now in red. I nearly bought a green one a few months ago to get reupholstered, but it was going to cost me well over $3,000. So this is the one I found and it was by absolute blind luck. I walked into the thrift store that day, I wasn't even going to go thrifting that day and this had just arrived from an, a deceased estate sale. So I'm really really happy that I decided to go thrifting that day. This particular couch is also date stamped for 1922 so it was produced in 1922 and it was reupholstered at approximately 30-40 years ago. I have had this professionally evaluated because it's going onto my contents insurance for all my valuable stuff. So that is probably the most important thing of this haul and definitely my favorite. The next thing I picked up is this cuckoo clock. It is post-war, it's date stamped for 1953 and I got this at a garage sale for $14. So. Again, another absolute steal. It does need repairing, um, so that's why these are still tied up. It's going to the repair shop as soon as I, as soon as I can get it in. Um, I haven't found a repair shop, well, a cuckoo clock specialist near me. So I think I'm going to have to make a three-hour drive to a cuckoo clock specialist, but um, hopefully I can get this fixed for quite cheap. Otherwise, I probably just won't get it fixed and just have it on the wall because it. Still looks pretty cool anyway. So I might as well just continue on with the thrift store purchases. So this is a cast iron candelabra and it's a full sized. Um, I picked this up at the thrift store for $10 for this one and another one that I'll show next. But yeah, I've been after one of these black cast iron ones for a while because I remember that my mum used to have one, but they got rid of it at least a decade ago. And this is the second candelabra that I picked up. This is just your basic chrome one, but it's got like a gold plating finish down the bottom and I really liked this one because it fit with um, my taxidermy wall because everything is very earthy but it also has some silver accents to it so yes that sits up there. The next thing that I picked up at the thrift store was this which is a I think it's a sweets tray but I'm using it actually as a ring holder because um, I don't really have a jewelry box I just kind of throw everything into different containers so my most used rings now go on here and it's actually really really cool. I don't know why, I just, I like this kind of stuff, the old 50s kind of dinnerware and I use it as holders for my jewellery. The last two things that I picked up at the thrift store is one, the Diary of Anne Frank for a dollar and I used to own this book many many years ago but I lost a lot of things in the floods a few years ago and books just happened to be one of them. So yeah, I picked that up again. The last thing that I got from the thrift store is this book which is all about mythology. The reason why I had to get this one was because it contains Norse mythology, which I haven't seen much literature on Norse mythology. Um, I'm not sure if it's just my country. I mainly see Celtic and like Roman classical kind of mythology. I don't really see much of the Norse stuff which is what really got me because that's my origin. Next up are a few items which I have personally done the processing for for the most part but you'll understand what I mean in a second. Um, there are three items that I'm going to show you and so the first one is this. A jar of bones. I found a dingo, a dingo skeleton out at Ackland which is an abandoned town just past Toowoomba and we were driving along the road, we were trying to find the old public toilets because my partner really needed to go and we stumbled across a dingo skeleton and it was perfectly sun bleached. It was almost like it was begging for us to come pick it up. We picked up pretty much every bone that we could of the skeleton. Some of it was just completely shattered. It had obviously been hit by a truck because the only trucks that go through that town now are mining trucks. So this particular jar is filled with vertebrae, ribs and a couple toe bones and I think two claws. So it's 
pretty cool. The reason why I did it like this is because I wanted them all on display and I don't know, I thought this would be a really cool idea. Along with that dingo, we found a couple other bones and I've got a couple toe bones over there which I've already turned into a necklace for my daughter. But um, more toe bones which are still fused and two ribs which I'm going to turn into necklaces. But I wanted to know if you guys wanted a tutorial on how to make bone jewelry. Um, again, I wanted to stress that I didn't kill this dingo, it was hit by a truck. I came along months later. It was already a sun bleached skeleton by the time I got there. So the coolest thing about finding the dingo was this. This I had to piece back together, but it was um, four or five pieces, which I have fused. You can probably see some fusion spots, but yes, so worth it. I don't see dingo skulls for sale anywhere, and this is just it means a lot to me because I personally found this, I personally put this back together, I don't know, I, I love this. So and I actually really like the fact that this particular eye socket and part of the snout, um, it was shattered beyond belief, I couldn't get it back together. So I, I actually like how just destroyed it looks. I think this is probably my favourite piece of osteology that I own, I own quite a few skulls and other bones, but this particular piece took me hours upon hours to piece back together and I don't know, I, it, there's a lot of personal connection between myself and this piece so that's why it's my favourite. So moving on to a couple other random finds, this is another thing that I found at a garage sale. I already have one of these but I really wanted a second one and regretted not buying it a couple years ago so I found a second one which is absolutely freaking awesome because these, these are just so cool. I love how they reflect bats onto my walls when it's dark and you put a little tea light in there and yeah, so cute. Oh, another thing that I forgot to include in the thrift store part of this, these boots, they are Whitner branded, so a pretty expensive brand, but I got them for $4. They are half a size too big, but I really don't give a crap because they are so cool, so comfy and just easy to put on because they've got the zip on the side. My normal winkle pickers don't have that, and while they're not exactly winkle pickers, they are still quite witchy looking boots. The second last item I have to show to you guys is this. I picked this up at an antique sale and they pretty much just gave it to me. Um, I paid 25 cents for this because we were just trying to get the total sale up to a round number. I bought something else which I gave to someone else as a present. The reason why I got this is one, I loved the frame. My back tattoo is the frame part of it is actually modelled off this. The second thing is I loved how creepy the child looks. It's not really creepy, it's more the fact that you don't really see many images or paintings of children or being depicted of children crying, upset, whatever. This is also date stamped for the 50s. So the final item in this haul is actually from my mother for my birthday. Every year she gets me a piece of taxidermy, so last year she got me a chipmunk, the year before that she got me a bat, so this year she got me a Eurasian magpie. And this guy sits right next to my crow because they're part of the same Corvus family. And this guy's name is Edgar. I do name all my taxidermy. A little disclaimer that I feel I have to say because there will be someone who will comment something. I do not in the slightest way condone commission kills, hunting, anything like that because it's all absolutely friggin disgusting to me. I only buy vintage taxidermy which you know was done decades ago or things that died of natural causes. Now in Australia we have very, very strict taxidermy laws where they have to die of natural causes or they have to be an animal that were being culled, which I do not buy those kind of animals because that's kangaroos and that stuff. I don't own any kangaroos. Hopefully someday soon I will show you guys my taxidermy collection. I'll explain every piece. I'll tell you their name, all of that stuff. So look forward to that video. I'll most likely be making that in the next six months or so. Anyway, that was a bit of a tangent and a half, but yes, I love, love this piece. I'm very, very grateful for the fact that my mum has kind of come around and accepted my love for different things. So that is all for this oddities haul and if you guys respond well to this maybe I'll keep making more. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already because I'd love to be here for every single video. Like this video if you like the haul, comment down below if there's something you would like to see on this channel 
Also, I want to know what your best thrifting find was and hope you all have a fantabulous day.